So, um, <laughs> if you've been paying attention to the news at all, and honestly, over the past three hours, it's been hard, kind of hard not to, um, you will know that today was a very unusual day. And that during a rally in Pennsylvania, Donald Trump um, came under fire, came under attack. Literally. Someone tried to shoot and kill him. Now, I'm not... I will preface this by saying I wish Trump and his family and his constituents well. I pray for them. I pray for their health. I pray for their well-being. I pray for their mental their mental health because going through something like this can be traumatizing and can be overwhelming. That being said, I see a lot of reaction to these events that concerns me. I see lots of reactions to these events that unnerve me as well. What am I talking about? Well, in the minutes and the hours following the attack, there have been people on Twitter and on Facebook and on other platforms, including True Social, that have basically started using this as a rallying cry to basically say that Trump is the chosen one. To basically say that Trump is their political messiah, if not their spiritual messiah, which is where I really have trouble. It's one thing to say, oh, well, he's our political savior because he will take this nation back in a direction we actually want it to go. Fair. Fair. But when you start talking about Trump as if he's the next the next coming of Jesus Christ, you have to be very, very careful of who you're listening to. Because honestly, this sounds very much like something that the Bible warns us about. So there are a lot of people, including this one person here, that... Um, basically say um, God saved Trump so that Trump can serve his purposes. Um, okay, fair, fair. I have a possible different interpretation of these events today. So if we look to the word of the Bible, if we look to the Bible itself, we will see in Revelation chapter 13, verses 3 and 4, where it's talking about the beast. It's talking about the dragon giving the beast his power, his throne, and his great authority. And then in verse 3 it says, One of its heads appeared to be fatally wounded, but its fatal wound was healed. Its fatal wound was healed. The whole earth was amazed and followed the beast. They worshipped the dragon because he gave authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to wage war against it? Let me be clear. I am not saying I know for certain, because the Bible warns us. We will not know who the son of perdition, who the, the beast, who the Antichrist will be. However, given today's events and given the reaction immediately following and following after, I cannot help but draw parallels. Immediately when this event was taking place, people were going to Twitter and saying, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, he's shot, he's down, he's gone. People were worried that because he grabbed his ear, and fallen down that he had died. Fair, fair point. Fair concern. A lot of people where you hear pop, 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 they grab something and they go down, they've been directly hit. However, it was immediately confirmed not long after they had carried Trump or led Trump off of the stage that he was all right. As we see him standing back up, 
you see his right ear covered in blood and his right cheek streaked where he had grabbed his ear and then probably went straight to trying to put his hands down to get down on the ground, right? So you see it, you see blood on his ear, you see blood on his cheek. And as he's getting up, he looks to the crowd and raises his fist and says, fight, right? Okay, rallying cry for his troops. Good, great. But you see people saying, oh my goodness, God delivered him. God saved him so that he could be the one that, um, the one that saves this nation, the one that saves this world. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. You really do. Because this day and age is so full of many, many, many false lights and false prophets and false prophecies and false doctrines and even just misled folks. You know, they may not be actively trying to lead folks away from the, the truth, but because of their convictions, they are actually leading people away from the truth. And so I hear about this. I see the reactions. I look back and look at the footage, and I can't help but wonder. Because if you reread that verse, it says, one of its heads appeared to be fatally wounded. The appearance of a fatal wound. What were people saying right after he went down? It looks like he got shot. It looks like he got shot in the head. It, it, it looks bad. It looks serious. People were saying that they thought he was dead. And then he gets back up and he's okay. And they go, oh my goodness, who can beat Trump now? Because now we see the rallying cry of, well, because they couldn't take him out. He's definitely winning now. He's definitely winning this election. Who was like the beast? Who was able to wage war against it? Or in some translation, who is able to oppose it? Who is able to oppose it? That is very, very wonderful. I mean, very, very not wonderful, but just, you know, I guess it's it's very concerning, but it's also very interesting that this is what this is where this um I guess goes. Cause honestly, it's I mean it's ha, this is great in a in a sarcastic sense, really, because you know. You think about it, you think about it. Um, you think about this, and you think about he was already declining in, in numbers. He was already declining in the polls and stuff, right? And Joe was starting to gain more traction again, especially after recent events, other than the other than the, the debate, but then again, the debate is also hotly contested as to who came out on top. But then you have this. You have this moment. You have this time where, oh my goodness, it had to be this group, that group, the other group. And so everyone's rallying against the opposition because obviously the opposition was the one who started this or the one who caused this. And so because of that, I, I just want you guys to be, con I want you guys to be careful about throwing your opinion and your support behind a candidate just because of popular sentiment or popular opinion. You know, um, I think of the lemmings, you know, you remember that old cartoon or game or whatever lemmings where they would all run off the cliff and they'd all just die. I don't want you to be a lemming. I want you to be a human being. The The Bible says in, in Romans 12, 2, it says, Do not be conformed to the pattern of the world, 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It says that. Um, in that, you know, don't even be conformed to the pattern of the church that you go to or the church that you attend or the congregation you're a part of because even within the body of Christ, there can be division and there can be deception. You know, one of the things that the Corinthian church especially dealt with was deception from within the body, false doctrines being taught within the body, false directions being given within the body. So do not just go along with the crowd just because they're part of your church. Think for yourself, make your own decisions, make your own observations, dig a little deeper. I'm not saying don't vote for the guy if that's what you feel like doing. I'm saying consider every angle before you make a decision. Because this is not, it is not boding well for the future of our nation or the future of the world. This is not boding well for us being a united kingdom of God. It's, it's boding poorly. It's showing that we're heading further and further down the road of destruction and division and eventual deception. So be careful. Keep watching. Keep looking up. For hopefully our redemption draws ever nearer. And hopefully it's near enough that you can touch it. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful evening. Pray for present. Pray for President Biden. Pray for Donald Trump. Pray for our nation. Pray for our leaders. And pray for the divisions in our nation to end. Please.